guys so welcome back to my channel in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you guys how I style and curl my short hair so I just recently chopped my hair for those of you guys who have been with me for a very 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 long time now you know that I used to have hair like pretty much down to my hip bones like really long 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 hair and one day I just decided to chop it so I cut it like right up to probably right above my boobs um, eventually I just kind of chopped it and have kind of had like shorter hair ever since um, I did find that after having really long hair I didn't realize how easy it was actually to curl long hair and it's much harder for me in my opinion to curl short hair so with that being said I'm sharing a ton of tips and tricks and just kind of what I do to make it easier and to make it look really cute fluffy and fun just because that's kind of the look I always go for when I have short hair so yeah if you guys are interested in seeing how I get this look then just keep watching So I'm starting out with some dry shampoo and even though my hair is not dirty, I just like to uh, apply this to my roots to give some volume, some texture, and to also prevent it from getting greasy. I find this is the best way for me to use dry shampoo. My hair just responds really well to it and it's less likely to get greasy after that. So to add some moisture to my ends, I'm going in with this agave oil. I will link it down below. I highly recommend this oil. It's so good. You don't need much at all. A lot, a lot goes a long way. A little goes a long way and it just smells absolutely delicious. So first I'm sectioning off my hair and clipping the top part up and out of the way and then I'm just splitting my hair down the back and dividing it into two sections. I'm then taking one inch sections of hair and using my one inch Conair curling iron. I love this curling iron. I will link it down below for you guys. It's very, very inexpensive, easy to get your hands on and I've repurchased it two or three times. It's just like my favorite curling iron ever. Um, so yes, I'm taking one inch pieces of, or sections of hair. Then I'm taking my curling iron and wrapping my hair around it close to the root. And then as you can see, I use the clamp to kind of wiggle my hair down. I loosen it a little bit and slide the curling iron down and out of my hair. Um, I like to leave about a one inch section of hair out of the curling iron at the end. I don't like my ends to be totally curled. It just makes your hair look a little bit longer, especially when it's shorter. You don't want it to just like spring right up. This kind of helps keep the length of your hair while still giving it the curl. So as you can see, I pull it to almost the end and then I slide the end out of the curling iron. I kind of unwind the curling iron. Right here, you'll see me do it unwind and pull straight. So also a little trick is to um, use your curling iron and have the clamp wrapping towards the direction that you want your curl wrapping. So my clamp is wrapping towards the back when I curl my curls and that way I know my curls are going to be going towards the back or away from my face. So I hope this is all making sense but I will kind of just let you watch and I will get back to you when we get to the top part. Okay, so pretty much the same with the top part, but I do have some different techniques, but I do like to separate it into two sections straight down from the back, and I always start curling in the back. So that way you are less likely to have straight pieces in the back or miss any um, if you start right from those pieces. So I'm just kind of doing the same thing. You will notice if I have any pieces that I curl too far down, I will use the curling iron to kind of straighten out the ends, just because like I said, that helps keep the length of your hair and kind of give it that messy texture that I like. So I also like to take the pieces lowest and furthest back. Again, that just helps from getting straight pieces and missing any pieces. I find that is the easiest way. And I am just continuing the same pattern along the top. 
So something I will often do is when my curl is still hot, so right after I release it out of the curling iron, I'll take my fingers and kind of fluff it up and push the curl up and rub it in between my fingers to add texture and volume. Um, especially where this is a side with less hair, I will show you another trick in a minute. But for these front pieces, I don't like to, those to be like super curled, so I'll kind of straighten those out and just put a little bend in those curls. I think it's a little bit more flattering around your face. Um, but like I said, since this is the side with less hair, it tends to be more flat so I like to use my curling iron like a wand and wrap it around so I wrap it around towards the back I hold it for just a few seconds release it and then I like to scrunch it up so I hold the um, ends of my hair and then use my other hand to kind of scrunch the curl up it adds volume and again just some more texture and I just do this with small little pieces from the top and then I shake it out and run my fingers through it and go ahead and jump to the other side. So since there is more hair on this side, it tends to take a little bit more time to cool off. So I like to take my fingers and push my hair up and kind of shake it out. This allows me to feel if the hair is still hot. And once it is almost cooled down, that's when I will run my fingers through it. By also pushing your hair up like that, it does add volume while it's cooling um, and it's more likely to hold. So then I'm just checking the back to see if I see any straight pieces. Usually I will also check that with a mirror, but this is kind of where I'm at. I just shake, push up. And at this point, if I want even more volume, I will go in with my curling iron and I will separate my hair, like the top parts of my hair, and I'll hold it straight up and use my curling iron to heat that hair up in the upwards position, if that makes sense. I like to kind of push it towards the other side and then I throw it to the opposite side to cool off. This way it is cooling in the opposite direction, so it's more likely when you flip it back over to have that volume that you want. So I let it cool, shake it out that way, and then as you guys can see, when it comes back to the other side, there's so much more volume. Then I'm going in with some dry texture spray. I really love the Kristen S dry texture spray, which I usually get at Target. It comes in a black bottle, um, but I also like this one too, and it's half the price. So I'll link them both below, but I just like to throw this all through at my root, all through my ends, and just kind of anywhere that I feel needs, again, I've said it a million times, texture. It's all about the texture with this look. And then I'm going in with some hairspray. So I just like to pull my hair up and just kind of spray it at the ends and then I spray it upwards. So don't spray it in your eye like I did. Um, but everything is up, up. That's what I always say with my hair. I just pull up, spray up, scrunch up, everything up. <laughs> So that is absolutely it for today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I hear a baby girl waking up right now, so that's great timing. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.